Does it matter that the current British Prime Minister is the shortest male Prime Minister since Winston Churchill? Of course not. In fact, I hadn't even known that because it clearly does not matter. What matters is whether somebody is capable and what matters is what somebody's ethics are. Political views. However, yesterday I found a paper, or was it this morning, in The Guardian that discusses this topic. The Guardian, that is Coco Khan, talked with a professor who has studied these things. And the headline is, taller people have a lower risk of many diseases, do better in education and earn more. This happens to be a topic that I looked into with in the context of the new eugenics, also called liberal eugenics, consumer eugenics, what have you. The idea of creating quote-unquote designer babies. Now, I know that a lot of people get really angry when you use the term designer babies. But let's take this example. There are already people who go abroad to circumvent the laws in their own country so that they can have a designer baby. If you can pick the gender of the baby, then you're making a designer baby. Sometimes they end up with a different nationality. We have to stop focusing on these external attributes as a measure of our value. In the article by The Guardian, it's discussed that people are having surgeries to become taller, and that this is heartbreaking. Their bones get broken, basically. What's not mentioned is that in the Netherlands, more and more children are having surgery to do the reverse because they are constantly bumping their heads against cupboards and ceilings and door entrances and whatnot. I have various links in the description to papers and articles. In the Netherlands, this operation is possible when boys expect to become over 2.5 meters to 05 meters tall, and for girls, if they expect to become taller than 1 meter 85. This used to be a hormonal treatment, but that's no longer done because it can cause infertility in the females. There are cultural aspects to this as well, but it's mainly a thing about beliefs and about fashions. For example, whether your breasts are large or small, whether that's desirable, whether your nose is small or Roman, I think, or Grecian. <laughs> I don't even know how to pronounce it. That too is according to fashion. There was a time when bulky women, let's call it bulky women, were considered desirable, much more desirable than thin women, because in those days thin women stood for poverty and bulky women stood for prosperity. These things change all the time. Besides, if you promote that people become taller, then you either have to go for 10 meter tall people or at some point this becomes a disadvantage and then short becomes the desirable standard to achieve. Some years ago, I think it was Oprah Winfrey who carried out an experiment during one of her television shows. People were told that blonde and blue eyed people were much more desirable and much more intelligent and so on. They were given different treatments, whether you were dark-haired and brown-eyed, or you had light hair and light-colored eyes. And the effect this had on people stunned them. It turned into a fight. People became very depressed and very aggressive, etc., etc. What people are told to believe is desirable can have profound effects. So whether you are tall or not, doesn't mean that you're more capable, although there is, of course, a strong function of prosperity. If you grow up in prosperity, have appropriate nutrition, then you do much better in school. 
and you end up with much better grades and you get a better job. But it's not by definition the case that if you're taller, you're a better person, you're more capable. That's absolutely not the case. 